So, um, would you be able to do the, do the recording? That's yeah, the, the Zoom recording and the, the screen that I've got just behind that's the, the video conference call. Basically, our recording camera, we have that over on our other site over at Telford. So, what we've done is we're using this video conferencing camera, which is going to record this angle down here on this screen. And so, if I just quickly flick it. Basically, they're using this input here so they can actually see from that camera and they're recording that as we speak yeah. now. And what they'll do is they'll send that through to the after. I can. Yes. So your glass of water's coming, we give it a short um, okay, um, thank you very much. So, um, what I'll do is I'll um, just give a, another overview of the centre just quickly, just to say where you are. And what this, um, this is a visualisation centre, um, and this is where we um, work with small businesses within the region, within the West Midlands, to help um, make them more uh, entrepreneurial um, and um, to promote innovation within the region as well. So this is a nice uh, introduction for businesses to, to come in and just use the space in a very similar way to yourselves today, uh, and just to, to allow us to do various presentations, um, and as we mentioned earlier, just to record some of the presentations that we do, so we can then uh, obviously then showcase what the centre is able to do. So we'll come on to that a little bit more a little bit later, and, and hopefully if you've got time, um, you're more than welcome to have a, a, a tour with us afterwards, where we can just take you around and show you how the centres work. Um, so, as I said, my name is Paul Burrow, um, I'm project manager for the Innovation First project, um, but I'm part of the business solutions department, um, which works um, nationally, regionally, um, and, and locally, uh, also internationally uh, as well. We've got a, a very uh, strong um, strategy um, to help us work internationally, which we're developing all the time. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to cover today um, the overview of the university, uh, just give you a small background into the university, uh, the type of work that we do. Um, then introduce the Business Solutions Centre, um, which is um, through the corridor where you, you signed in initially, and, and how we have a synergy with that. <clears throat> and then I'll cover the incubation hubs that are available. Um, so it's not just this campus and this science park, that's incubation hubs. We also have incubation hubs available at our sister campus, which is over at Telford. So the institution uh, makeup is that we have uh, over 23,000 students, around 13,000 of those full time. Um, we have over 2,000. Young gentlemen here. Anybody else yeah, for water? So we have over uh, 2,200 members of staff here, and uh, turnover around 148 half million. Um, so it's fairly big numbers, really, um, within the region, um, because we have such a, a large um, number of uh, students. Um, so there's a high level of or high uh, regard for getting graduates into into jobs, because it's great that we're supports and what we're providing the education, but, but what happens next? Um, and so we're very focused on ensuring that our, our themes that run throughout that is to support graduates into roles, um, which obviously then helps drive the market. So it's a very complex organisation. It has a lot of um, various areas that it works at, and, and this is um, a cloud created of, of the number of words that are used on search terms when they're uh, looking at the University of Wolverhampton uh, and the number of papers that are written. It pulls it back, puts it into a cloud, and it shows you the large words. So you can see that one of the main themes is uh, knowledge transfer, innovative, incubators, employer engagement, award winning, which is always nice to see. Yes. Um, and so you can see there's a lot going on, there's a very big picture. Um, and so what we try to do is we tend to pull out those streams because we're purely business focused. What we aim to do is make it clear for a business what we can do in a, in a way to support them um, and help them to, to grow and become more successful than what we are. So how, do we all, how we all comprise? Well, um, this is a, a small uh, picture of, of how we link together. So we've got um, 
Black Country Chamber of Commerce, Wolverhampton City Council. Um, we have Business Link West Midlands, City of Wolverhampton College, and University of Wolverhampton. They all combine uh, within the Wolverhampton Business Solutions Centre. So the Solutions Centre is a way of pulling this partnership together. So Gary Dimmock um, is a Business Solutions Centre manager. Um, he's based next door. Um, and he works by uh, working with each of these individual partners to pull together specific offers um, and also to find out what offers are going on with the, the various partners to then promote to businesses. So Gary will put on events uh, within this centre here, um, but he will also then obviously transfer the businesses through. We might have events in here as well. So it helps that hub of promotion. Um, so there's a lot of valuable linkages that we have within the region um, as a result of, of that partnership. So what is there to, to offer? Well, um, as we said, there's a, a lot of various offers that, that come out from the university, um, and it's all about helping us to um, helping us to promote what it is that, that we do well. And um, these are just some of the offers that we have around the. Uh, the employment opportunities for um, graduates. Um, it's also the offers that, that we give out, but it's not limited to just these. There's, 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 there's other offers as well at various stages. So on here, these are all of our employability options. Um, so as you can see, there's a number of different um, areas that we can talk to businesses about in the ways in which we can help employment within those businesses. Um, of which one of which is Innovation First, which, as I say, provides this visualisation sense that we have today. Um, but then we have the, the various uh, voluntary schemes, STEP schemes, um, KEEN, which is our Knowledge Exchange Enterprise Network, of which we are, are a partner, we are a lead partner of within the West Midlands. Um, and this is uh, we have a KTP, or Knowledge Transfer Partnership, of which we were uh, one of the leading deliverers on the Knowledge Transfer Partnership. So the KEEN project is around a £24 million project. Uh, and that's split between, I think it's seven different partners. Um, what that allows us to do is it allows us to um, cross-promote. So we work with other institutions, highlighting employment. Um, and that's essential, really, to make sure that we promote employability not just locally, but throughout the West Midlands as well. And again, this is European Regional Development Funds to help us um, ensure that we've got graduates moving through into relevant roles. So if I come back to the Business Solutions Centre, what does that provide? Um, why, is it, uh, why is it so useful? Well, I'll move on to the incubation spaces shortly, but um, the Business Solutions Centre, adjoined to this, has you know, seminar rooms, small bookable meeting rooms, has a nice professional boardroom, all of which tenants around on this site can book to use, come into use, so they don't need to have that space within their local business. Um, it's open for bookings in the same way as today we're, we're using this space here. We could be using the seminar space next door, um, and that's you know you can book catering with it as well. So you, it, it caters for your needs effectively as a business. Um, but equally, if you were based on site in one of the uh, um, row on spaces or incubation zones. Um, it's a very nice thing to have because it, you know, it helps you promote your business in the right way in a professional um, um, environment. So what can we offer to businesses? Well, through the Business Solutions Centre with its partners, it, it helps to um, each of the following. You know, we've got an order investment. Um, they can find um, advisors that help do market intelligence to then look to see what opportunities there are for you as a business. Business development, they've got a set of business development advisors that help you uh, renew, uh, review your business, um, do almost a uh, form of consultancy um, report to the business, see the state to play with that, see what they can do to, to help assist you. Where we were talking about the previous offers, seeing what can be worked into that business to help enhance your offer. Uh, enterprise, um, it will help you look at if you're starting new businesses. Um, what options are available to you. So at the moment, um, the universities um, help and coordinate um, the Green Shoots Fund locally within the West Midlands, um, which is helpful for businesses that have started up looking for uh, growing on support to help um, uh, be around product design. You can, you can obviously put your proposal forward to look to see if you can secure funds, further funds to assist your business. 
So without a centre like this, it would be very difficult for a business to pick and choose to see what offers are suitable for that type and size of business. Um, some um, solutions are only available to businesses with more than five employees, whereas others are for much smaller employee and smaller businesses with less employees. Um, as a business, what we find um, in terms of feedback um, to us is that um, a lot of business owners don't have the heads up time that they need in order to do all of this research to find out where they need to be. Mm -hmm. So you neglect what it is that you need to do to help you move forward. So having a centre like this does that work for you. You can say, oh, just need to see the way forwards. What is it I can do? And immediately they've got some offers for you that they can put on the table and help you move forward. So moving on further, um, areas that we can look at. Skills development, recruitment and selection. So there's the opportunity to uh, come in and, and look on how to recruit graduates. So breaking down those barriers, I want somebody, but do I have to have a contract in place? If so, do I have to write a contract? Can you do that for me? What wages should I pay them? What's the minimum? So, you know, all of the questions you think I just don't have time for. It's then it's, it's rolled up nicely into a package and offered to you so that you can then see that and obviously promote that yourself. Compliance and regulatory advice. Again, you know, we, we, we know recently had the budget where, where you know things change quite quickly. Um, we can see how that affects your business directly, you know, whether it increases your overheads, whether it means that you actually make more money or whether you lose money as a real sort of changes. All of the uh, changes and, and um, alterations that could affect you, we can again package that up, make sure that you know you're aware of those changes and how they affect you. And again, as we previously mentioned, we've got the facilities for hire. So the Business Solution Centre has that lovely set of facilities that you can come in and use um, if you want to just take that step outside of your office and have, whether it's neutral footing or something, just slightly different to your office space that's fully uh, available. So if we go on to the incubation aspects, of course, um, you've all now seen parts of the, the Wolverhampton Science Park, which comprises of the three separate zones. Um, here we've got approximately 160 tenant businesses, and that's split across the Wolverhampton Science Park and the Telford e Innovation Centre. As I say, I'll break those two down shortly in a moment. Um, we also have a graduate startup support project, um, which is this uh, SPEED project or Student Placements for Entrepreneurs in Education. Um, and that is about taking a graduate, taking their idea, um, looking to see how they can implement that within a business, helping them start the business up, um, and then providing them with a small amount of funds to help run through the, the initial rigmarole of, okay, I need marketing support, I need to find an accountant, I need to register my company and set up a website. So it helps these, again, where we're talking about helping businesses that already exist, we're helping people start up from scratch. We're helping keep that nice and simple so it's easy for them to move on to the next step. Mm -hmm. So as I said here, since 2009, universities helped 95 artists to set up their own businesses. As we say, we've also got then that grant support through the Innovation First project. Once they are a business, they can then have an assist through Innovation First, which is completely free to the business. So it's fantastic to say that. It's a really nice holistic offer. The business can come here, use these facilities as part of an assist for free, um, which would allow them to then say, right, OK, well, I'd love to do video conferencing. I'd love to be able to have my own digital signage. Show them some tips and tricks again. So it comes back to what we were saying earlier, work smarter rather than harder. And adopting new technologies and just making sure that they know what's coming on the horizon so they don't you know, get bitten in the bump when things take you know, you know, a, a change. Um, again, that's within the West Midlands. And we've got cross-sector support there. So um, one of the three areas, so this is the, the Business Solutions Centre, uh, which is the, the, the partnership, as I said, uh, mentioned previously, and um, we've got the Business Solutions team upstairs as well. Um, we've also got um, the actual incubation space that the, the businesses are located in, and then there's two sections of that. You know, there's this section here which incorporates Spark, um, and there's also the Technology Centre, which is across the way. So we've got two large areas that incorporate a number of um, a range of different businesses. Um, and the reason the businesses come and use the, the space is because you've got this fantastic choice of, of furnished or um, 
accommodation. Um, it also allows us to have 24 hour access to the uh, accommodation as well. So it means that at whatever time as a small business they want to come and do their work, they can do that. It's not a nine to five. Um, it also means that then within this zone and this hub of collaboration that's permanently going on, so from ourselves, there's a business sat over there, they're getting businesses coming through this centre day in, day out, we offer networking opportunities, so we have breakfast events, we have larger seminars that could be held in the various zones, and it just means that it's helping that business to business interaction. And the difference is sitting away from these hubs means that you don't get that interaction in the same way. You know, one of the great things about video conferencing is yes, you can you can see 12 different people in any given uh, instance. But realistically, is our deals done over video conferencing? I don't think so. It's more face-to-face -face activity. It's that handshake. It's that trusted partner. And so having zones like this help to do that. It helps to bring people together and helps to kind of finalise these solutions. So that's Spark, which we've got some flyers that you can take away with you later on as well. And that just talks about the facilities exactly, you know, how you would engage with them. We then have the Innovation Centre at Telford. So I, previously I mentioned there were two zones. There's, there's the Wolverhampton Science Park and there's the Telford Innovation Campus. Telford Innovation Campus includes a launch pad um, facility um, in, in, the, in the form of an innovation centre. So it's a, it's a really nice, well-built um, incubation zone. So um, it's businesses that would normally be home-based. Um, but they've got this drop in area so they can have a registered business address. So again, if you want to be that, I'm a business bigger than I am, if it's a, it's a startup company that then says, I need a professional working space to bring my clients to, so that they get the right impression, they can go to the e Innovation Centre where they can have drop in space there. Um, so at the present, it has an incubator that has 36 units uh, aimed at startup technologies companies, um, which has growing space for commercial businesses. What's actually happened recently as well is they've now created a further growing space over at Telford, which again is very close proximity to the visualisation centre that we have at Telford, which incorporates the same type of technology here. So what that does for the businesses is it means that it's now, they've now got this ability to, again, network, again, work with businesses, but also now have access to the various types of technologies that we have in, in order to help reduce the amount of time we take for them to do their day-to-day their -day business activities. So, all in all, um, we look at the, the state of play from the institution and, and how it, it's been trying to support the, the, the local region. Um, over the last 10 years, there's been £100 million of capital investment in, in, in the building's infrastructure that they've created. And there's going to be you know, a further £45 million worth of investment in, in future buildings um, that are starting this summer um, around the uh, city. So what that allows us to do is it allows us to make sure that that infrastructure is there in, in, in time for the grow on that we want to achieve. Um, so that's it, create the right foundations and then start to support businesses and work on from there. So we are committed to making sure that we're providing a, a quality service for not only students but also for graduates and businesses. Um, and we are also looking to make sure that we work nationally and internationally to make sure that that offer is then transferred as wide as possible. So, I hope you enjoy your visit today. As I say, welcome Very to our well tour here. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes, um, with regards to the, uh, the, the startups, like um, having a working place, um, how long can that be for? Is it one year, six months? Again, it's, it's, it's generally down to um, negotiations with the space here because, as I say, through the, the speed project, um, again, it's, it's almost to, to fit the business because it depends how you fit it because we've got different types of companies, but quite slow starting small businesses that can start to have support through the, the speed program. Um, and they actually have some startup space over in the, the centre, um, technology centre over the way. Um, and so a lot of the small businesses can go into there initially um, before they want to kind of take the next step along. Um, and that could be supported through the funds out of the project. So initially, for certain businesses, they, they, they might receive £1,000 worth of fund funding through, through the actual uh, project, which would allow them to pay towards some of those ongoing fees. 
Um, for high growth businesses, where they can demonstrate that they're actually becoming a, a, a much larger business very quickly, doing a lot of, um, um, I suppose, business engagement activity, increasing their turnover quickly. It then attracts potentially further funding because they put, puts them into a different category of business. <coughs> so they might receive, say, another 500 to 1,000 pounds worth of funding to help that, that um, grow on. So if, in terms of the, the amount of time they have, again, it's all, it's all dependent on how they spend that grant because it could be that they spend more of it on promoting their own business or doing more marketing um, materials, or it could be that they just purely want to put it into, okay, I've got a dedicated space, we're going to be bringing businesses and do the work here. Um, so yes, it's quite it can be quite varied. My second question <laughs> is: um, if there's any um, uh, setup concept that other businesses can, for example, those working in the hub here can tap into some of the knowledge of those who are coming in it as. Um, as part of the incubation yes. uh, process. So, for example, if somebody it does uh, web development, yep. and I'm a web designer, yep. um, how you link the two together? Can you link together so that I can tap some knowledge from him, you can tap some knowledge from me, mm -hmm. and then possibly the work collaborating together whilst you know, we are in this environment? I mean, that's, that's, that's entirely what we want to do, I mean, especially with this space. Um, the idea is to help promote business to business engagement as much as we can. So by, by putting on breakfast events and then helping to add uh, to networking is great. But a lot of the time it's in a space. But if it's in a space that you can then say, you now have the capability to come and use this space, um, you can get smaller businesses signed up to an assist. That then allows them to come and use the space, use the location, use their own devices with the equipment, and allow them to do that knowledge transfer. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the ethos that we want to promote with it. So, um, yeah, we, we hope that we've kind of captured that here. Um, I know that we had a company this morning that is a uh, speed startup project. They came in to work with a business that had been nominated for an award to help them do further work. So they were doing their knowledge transfer um, with the other business as well. So, again, it's a great example of, of just to show that that does actually occur. So. Yeah. Uh, so on the business uh, development, mm -hmm. um, what is the total package? Are there conditions that uh, you set up in order for the, yeah. especially the SMEs to come on board? Again, there's, there's, there's various um, solutions that can be provided in terms of the business engagement strategy. Um, one of the um, different strategies they had recently was an innovation voucher, where um, it was almost like a, a checklist was run through with the business to, to find out exactly what state the business was in. So they could then look for the appropriate type of support. Um, but, but equally, the, there are elements of business development work that's carried out, um, which realistically is more about trying to find out what the businesses want. So it's not necessarily a financial um, thing in the first instance. Um, again, what I focused on was there's a, a, a lot of, um, I suppose, um, emphasis placed on the ability to ensure this is a collaborative working, to make sure that we are working together in partnership with the businesses and, and, and with the local um, councils and chambers, etc., to make sure that we're pr promoting a hub of um, good practice or best practice, as it were. Um, so we may put on more events and then charge an online amount for the events to help work with the businesses. Okay. And equally, I mentioned earlier about the Green Shoots Fund, which yeah. again is about assisting businesses. You've got the Innovation First project, you've got yeah. Speed. So there's lots of different ways in which we can interact with businesses okay. that then end up funding through the actual projects or schemes. Okay. So our engagement wouldn't necessarily be, okay. this, is, this is the outline cost for us to you. It would be trying to fit it so that the business doesn't foot a, a bill as such. Mm, so yeah. the business receives the right type of support that's relevant to you. Um, because I think a lot of the time, some of the, the issues that, that can arise is where you try and say to a business, here's a set pattern of what we need to do with you. And it doesn't fit. That's right. What we yeah. find is that it's better to, to tailor it to a business because then you get the most impact. Then you make sure that actually you, you're using the funds in the correct manner to support the businesses. So yeah. it's more of like a, a GP. We can't let you tell you the, uh, the symptoms. Yeah. Actually, we can do it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. 
and for the graduates that are support, mm -hmm. um, I take it that it will be from the onset you will support them. And by so doing, uh, my next question is, uh, um, is this going to be an income generation activity as well for the university? Again, I, I think that, um, so from, the, from, from our project perspective, I'll take that example. Um, when we're doing work with a business, we, we cover, cover the cost for the support effectively. So it means that having the person in their job doing that job, that, 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 mm -hmm. um, that support's effectively you know, mm -hmm. covered. So what, what we then aim to do is look to make sure that the businesses, again, so this tailored support to make sure that the business starts to grow because you're supporting it in the right fashion. So when the business then, so very much like the GP, if you have a very good GP or a very good dentist or a very good mechanic, you would always go back to that individual because you think, right, okay, and the car's not starting, you pick up the phone and they call that. You don't go in the yellow pages because you know, trusted, responsible, I can go back, I understand that when I go there, we get great service. And that's what it's about. So if it ends up that it needs to be that business identifies that they want to, to go for a pay for service, they go for a solution, they know that they're going to be supported and looked after. I think a lot of the time when, when businesses are spending their money, they need to know that first before they would look to part of their cash because it's a very difficult time for businesses to increase their um, cash flow mm. and increase turnover. So yeah. Yeah, we go from, from, from that sort of aspect. So it's user-friendly for startups? Yes. What you I have, a, I have a question in terms of uh, international links on conferencing, mm -hmm. how that works. For example, I deliver a quite a good number of lectures abroad. Yeah. And uh, would, would that also come in as a free service or? Well, again, one of the one of the ways that in which the, uh, the university works is you know we're obviously we're raising awareness about what opportunities there are and and, and obviously this this project is around ensuring that we, we, we demonstrate the types of technology data. So um, for that, we, we run an awareness raising events. And a lot of the time we do it so that people are then uh, seeing the opportunities. So we create opportunities that, that might not necessarily be available before. So um, Lee will be testament uh, to the fact that we do quite a lot of different video conferences to um, all, all, all corners of, of, of the earth, really. Um, I mean, I know that we went for a world record attempt in one instance, where we were trying to link up a number of different uh, countries um, and then going for a world record at the same time. Um, that was quite challenging, but equally it's about just making sure that we're prepared in advance. So we just did a couple of tests to make sure that you know, they've got the necessary bandwidth in order for us to allow you to do the video conference. Uh, and then just inform them about what the limitations were. So again, the, the, what we can help facilitate is some of that um, kind of removal of the barriers of, but how much would I need to spend on the equipment and how would I deliver this? Um, and a lot of the time that, that's the main issue. It's the, I don't want to drink because I don't know where I'm drinking to. So as soon as you say to me, that's it. I'm all in then, you know, both feet straight, jump straight on. So, um, it would work simply by us just doing a couple of trial runs, making sure that, that each of the various areas are comfortable with the way in which they would be working. Um, and the nice thing about the solution we provide from a video conferencing perspective is that you would simply need a laptop with a webcam oh. at its most basic level. Um, I mean, now it's, it, times have changed a lot since we started the project because. Initially, you would have thought that you'd be recommended to somebody, well, just take your mobile phone, and just, just, just use that, and the video conference will be fine. We started to find ourselves saying that now. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's just because the whole telecoms industry is really yes. moving uh, quite rapidly now. Um, well, I suppose technology in general is, uh, scares me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I work with it every day, so I can't imagine what it's like for a business yes. That, yes. that isn't involved in that aspect. That's right. um, yeah. Which is why I think it's fundamental that you keep doing these awareness raising exercises, because there'll always be something that a business then identifies and it needs to buy into. So. In terms of uh, the ordinary Skyping, that that tooling pretty easy. Skype, yeah. Skype, yeah. Um, again, one of the 
I mean, we for, for the video conferencing that we provide, there's a bridge that's actually part of the project. And what the bridge does is it allows you to have multiple calls into it. And it's the pathway that allows you to, to do these connections. The university hosts that, so it's, it's a yeah. unique offer. Yeah. Um, yes. And we then um, facilitate that, we look after it so that if there are any issues, if, if for whatever reason the video conference stops, we will support it. The difference with the likes of Skype, FaceTime, Google Hangouts, is it's all free, free for services. I mean, it's not non paid for services, so it's readily available, but it doesn't mean it's always going to work. It doesn't allow you to do multiple. You want to try to jump multiple and say pay £50. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Use that button. Yes. And so that's a difficult part of it. So again, it, it comes back to, to us just showing people how it works because a lot of the time people go, I really wish that I could have you know, 10 people watch me and, and, and talk to me at the same time. But actually, when you try out a video conference and there's 10 people around the corner and they're all trying to talk at the same time, yes. it's a horrible mess. So you're better off having, say, three or four people that contribute to the conversation and then the remainder watch. Or, or they write, so for, for example, you can, you can write down in the chat margin your questions, yes. and then there's a, a person designated to ask the question and get responses. So it's quite a, quite a nice delivery method. Watch this space. You were one of my students in Zen. <laughs> when I was teaching through Skype. And yeah. how did this go? Well, in some cases, we had challenges. At times we could not communicate. Yes. You know, mm. things would just go bang, yes. and we don't know from which end that is emanating. Exactly, and so yeah. in terms of being able to resolve the issue. Yeah. You know, that solution is not, you don't have somebody that's then supporting you within the service as well. And so again, this is where this is supposed to be different yeah. because you have somebody that then informs you of. So it's, it's always that issue. Everybody that uses a computer, mm. it comes up with this box when you do something wrong with a red cross in, yeah. and it's always your fault. But actually, it's not. A lot of the time, it's nothing to do with you at all. It's the fact oh, that the okay. computer's got the fault. And really, it should be apologised, say, I'm ever so yes. <laughs> um, I should have done this right. And, yeah. and, you know, so it's changing that context, and so that's where the kind of the human interaction aspect just means that mm. it's a much easier way to facilitate that knowledge transfer around yeah. technology. Yeah. I hope when you say international, you mean everywhere we should be able to link into this kind of thing. Well, that's it. I mean, again, yeah. it's, it's, it's just about trying to promote that um, and seeing what's possible. Yeah, and how do we? How is the process? I come from Zambia, yeah, and uh, I may want to sell this idea. Yeah, like he says, we've been, you know, having lessons on Skype. Yeah, it hasn't been that easy. No. But with this innovation, I can see that I'm sure we'll manage it very, very well. Again, it, cha it changes, uh, changes the, uh, the game a little bit, um, especially when you've got an instance where, I mean, so we've been using this solution for a year and a half, two years. Uh -huh. We've been supporting businesses uh, for, for quite a long time uh -huh. in terms of doing seminars, events, and so on. Mm -hmm. And the system so far hasn't fallen over. So in mm -hmm. terms of if we were to recommend it as a solution, uh, we can demonstrate that you know your kind of uh, the, the payback period in terms of if you were travelling instead, mm -hmm. um, but also the ability for the fact that it hasn't fallen over. It's on twenty four yeah. seven. We can do calls mm -hmm. all around the clock. Mm -hmm. It very quickly starts to pay back if you're saying well it cuts down on the flight times. It cuts down on the time I'm out of the office. Mm -hmm. When I can't get into the office, I can work from home. Yeah. Still, video conferencing, network with colleagues. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot, there's a lot to, to be gained from it. Okay. In regards to hiring of the hosts here, uh, can you please just specify mm -hmm. um, how many the large seminar, how many people the large seminar will accommodate? Um, seminar space next door, I believe it's um, around 45. And it's 15 in the Business Solution Centre, but there are also larger um, zones uh, that are yeah. looking at uh, you know around the 100 mark okay. uh, on Science Park here, and the same up at Telford as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they're lecture style um, rooms. And this um, more. Um, so they're, I mean, they're quite they're quite large spaces, um, but they're expansive spaces as well. So you've got their breakout rooms outside of it as well. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through to the business solution centre. You can okay. see that side as well. So you can have a look in there. Okay, that's per uh, per use. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, as I say, um, I mean, if you'd like, um, we can uh, have a, a quick tour around the centre. We can show you some of the parts and, and how it works. So yeah. I know Lee's been chomping at the bit to get around and show the technology because that's what he likes doing every day. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank